Still a full draw cup. Let's pull the next one. French. There we get an ally. So now that allies get to move, we'll see what they can do. The Prussians aren't doing so great. Advance the fifth, uh, fifth brigade rather into the town. It was close enough for one assault. Uh, there was another assault that looked tempting right here, but they didn't have enough movement points to get across the stream, so they couldn't complete that one. Also, that cavalry brigade that uh, rolled for initiative just moved up behind the stream on the flank there. Um, also moving up was the 7th Brigade. Again, just trying to get in a position to hopefully lend some support to the crumbling 4th Brigade here. The 2nd Brigade, they're going to try to reclaim some, some ground here. One roll of clothes and several assaults. They're going to do their best to push back the French there, get a little aggressive. The 3rd Brigade is down in this area and they are in Pretty tough shape. Several units in disorder, lots of uh, casualties, and a pretty big space right there uh, as the French start to push their way across the stream and through. And the 1st Brigade is in a similar situation. They're kind of pushed around, somewhat surrounded, and what, what few battalions remain are, are hard pressed. So the hope is the 5th Brigade here can push through and basically eject the French 7th Division, and restore the Prussian uh, position there. One other thing, there's that Landwehr Brigade right there, or excuse me, Battalion, and they changed formation in the line, and the rules for changing the line in Lenny in the second edition calls for a die roll to figure how many movement points it requires, and we rolled a 6. So they changed in the line, and we're not actually able to move forward to join their Brethren, 3rd Brigade there, or 2nd second, second Battalion of the 3rd Regiment. So, didn't actually turn out the way I wanted. I'd have been better served to just keep him in column and maybe try to, uh, maybe try to assault. Another land Landwehr isn't very good at that. We had three command points here at Quattro Bravo. We didn't really have a lot we could do with them. We rolled the clothes. All three British battalions there are going to try to push back those skirmishers. Pretty good chance they'll get that done. The Brunswick Light Brigade moved up and took position along the road. So I'll strengthen that bit of the line a little bit. But the Line Brigade is still back there with no ability to move. I kind of squandered a movement point here on this British uh, Brigade. I wasn't sure what I was trying to do. I was trying to reposition them to get someone get that one battalion that had uh, disordered and retreated back in the line, and I just mis miscalculated the movement points. So he's not quite there with his, with his brothers, but maybe he's in some good supporting position. That was it for the small amount of movement here at Quattro Bra. And there was no melee, or excuse me, there was no uh, charge in melee because basically there are no cavalry units anywhere that were in command or in position to do anything. So we'll move on to the fire phase. Moving west-east, starting at Quatre Bras, we have the line of French skirmishers here opposite the British 3rd Division. If their fire is, if their defensive fire is half as effective as their offensive fire, they're in pretty good position. Moving down the road, we'll see a little bit of fire here. Some more fire as this uh, French battalion is about to get 
uh, overwhelmed possibly by these uh, battalions. A little bit of fire there. And again, we'll, we'll check the west of the crossroads when we get, or east of the crossroads when we get there. Well, these French skirmishes are pretty tough. They are pouring fire on the British and causing some real, some real damage. We have a leader casualty, unfortunately. That is the ADC to Wellington, who is going to be out for 18 turns, which is, I think, probably going to take us to the end of the battle. But the bad part is he is one of the ADCs that carries orders to brigades. With him out, I believe that puts Wellington down a man and really seriously impacts the command for the uh, allies here on Quatrebra the west of the crossroads. Uh, the British got away pretty pretty lightly. Here in the end of the line we have this battalion that is still flanked by the French. They had no uh, command to move or reposition themselves so they are taking yet another shot but luckily they escaped unscathed. The only real casualty was here to this Hanoverian battalion. Further weakening and already very weak position in the line. Here looking to the east, the French have a lot of firepower. They definitely poured it on, but did not get the results they wanted. They were very hopeful of getting a a morale check failure here on these land bear after inflicting a casualty, but unfortunately they rolled very well. And we did not get any kind of a cascading retreat that has really helped open up this this side of the the field for the French. Otherwise not very effective uh, fire combats down the line. French had no luck repelling any of the um, uh, the assaulting units, but they did get two casualties and morale check failures. This battalion failed and retreated here, and this battalion of the 4th Brigade retreated back there, which basically leaves nothing more than some artillery opposite the French. So it's a good thing for the Prussians they have that 7th Brigade coming in right there. So I'll do it for defensive fire. We'll just turn around and hit the offensive side of it. Offensive fire for the Prussians here at Lenny. Saw a few casualties, notably this artillery firing here, and also this infantry firing at this now empty hex. And inflicted a casualty and caused a morale check and a retreat. But otherwise, they didn't cause too much damage on this sector of the field. I'm just kind of move up and look at the 5th Brigade and the remnants of the 1st Brigade, see if they can do any damage. No casualties along this line at all. Pretty, pretty long odd shots. But um, the 5th Brigade at least is getting close to uh, making their presence felt here probably in the next turn. Making our way westward to Quatrebra. Don't really have any good shots here. The British have these skirmishers taking pot shots, but they're fairly weak. This artillery is out of range. This artillery fired at point blank range at these skirmishers, but did not get a casualty. We'll move ourselves a little further to the west. Slight casualties inflicted here by the Brunswick advance guard. Skirmishers and the artillery here put a couple of uh, casualties on the French. But this uh, light brigade is really pretty poor in the, um, the line formation in terms of firepower. We finish with the 3rd Division. All those good British muskets just aren't doing a lot of damage. Had one casualty on the skirmishers here, but uh, no morale checks. And that'll bring our fire phase to the close. We can move on to our melee phase. So starting here at Quatrebra, we have basically these three assaults going in. I think we're obviously going to retreat before combat here. Get the French uh, skirmishers out of the way. They don't want to take that on. We'll just 
advance the reddish into that hex. Then we're going to retreat here as well. Maybe to there. Now the British can advance into the vacated hex and declare the next assault. I think the French have to roll the stand here and that's that's going to be it for pre-melee. I don't think the British have to roll since they rolled the close. The French do stand, but this is not a good attack for the British here. Um, this is a desperate attack. It's going to be one to two odds, but they do have their division leader with them with a modifier of plus two to the dice. I guess they get about the best possible result they could. Blank. Couldn't really expect much more than that. So each side will take a casualty. Check morale, and they'll both pass, and we'll refight. I don't think it's going to change the odds any. It's one to two. But the British rolled very poorly that time. They rolled a 12. So that is a leader casualty, meaning the division leader now is out, but he's not um, seriously wounded. It's only six turns. He's only stunned. So we'll get him back in just about, what, two hours. But additionally, that is an attacker route. So we'll have to take another casualty that we cannot afford and retreat. We'll have to retreat back across this stream here. I'm going to cheat a little bit, leave him routed on the game board. So that's a bad outcome. We only have one more here. We're going to go ahead and also retreat before combat. Going to advance across the stream. And this time, I'm going to forego the second attack. I'm going to learn our lesson a little bit. Leave him right there. That will conclude our melees here at Quachabra. At the north side of Lenny, looking south here, we have this battalion going to assault that um, skirmisher, and I think we're going to go ahead and get him the heck out of there. So that'll be um, two, five, six, seven. Then we'll leave him right there. I'll mark him to show he can't move the next time he has the opportunity. That puts us there. In theory, we could assault this guy, and I think we will because that is not a good position for those skirmishers. So our final position will be right there. It's kind of odd they can march that far, but they're basically chasing retreating forces, so there it is. Looking south, still a little farther east, we have four more assaults right here in this area. Basically, this is the second brigade asserting itself against the French 14th Division and 13th Division. So we're going to just kind of progress west to east here. So our first attack is here. There are two increments of French infantry and four increments of land bear. So we'll do those pre-melee morale checks. So while the land bear have a larger mass, they were not able to drive home their attack. They fail their pre-melee morale check in disorder. So See, that's one kind of running out of space here. Two. I have to go one more. I think I have to go on top of that land bear right there. 
that's going to cost me a morale check on those guys. And I rolled terribly. Rolled a 13. That's going to end up being a fail on everybody and a further retreat. Since they were already disordered, they become disordered again and therefore PGT. So that was a very unsuccessful attack. We'll go to the next one right here. Again, two French increments, much larger and more stable, a sturdy, I think. Prussian Battalion, those will be four to one odds on the pre-melee morale check. And it's not surprising that the French fail and they will have to retreat. So they'll retreat through those skirmishers and the Prussians will advance. So pretty successful there. They reestablish a line alongside their guns so they can protect those a little bit. Two more. This attack here in the flank, three increments, eight Prussian increments, so that'll be a another strong um, attack there, two to one in the flank. And the French roll pretty poorly. And it's not surprising that they're going to get pushed back given the flank position. Mm. So they have to retreat, disorder and retreat. We're falling back from here. One, two. I've got to go into this uh, marsh there. I don't like it, that's three movement points. I don't like to get hung up on those little things, you know? The idea is they need to retreat and get that guy out of there. So we will go ahead and advance into that hex. That'll leave us our final attack. I don't think this is going to be such a good one. Six increments against three. So a decent... Uh, pre-melee morale check odds for the Prussians. But who needs good morale check odds when your opponent keeps throwing dice in the teens? So that'll be another morale check failure and a retreat for the French. I'm going to retreat him across the stream there. So that was actually a pretty good... Uh, Pretty good set of assaults there. Only one bad outcome, but three good ones, so I'd say that was pretty successful for the Prussians. And we'll move on to our rally and reorganization phase. On the plus side here, Quatre Bras, the 33rd Regiment rallied. Didn't lose him routing off the map. The downside, the Hanoverians both routed and retreated leaving a fairly sizable gap right there. Looks like the French could have a good spot to exploit if they get a chance. The Nassars are continuing to route away. The second Belgian is just not in a, Dutch Belgian is not in a very good position. They may not be able to enter this fight again. For the Prussians, the real miracle is those two Landberg battalions both rallied. They were both routed, they both had 50% losses, and they both rallied. Several others did not. They continued their retreat to the north there. And also, these two units of the 4th Brigade also failed to rally and are retreating. But all in all, it wasn't a terrible turn for the Prussians. They were able to reestablish their line a little bit over here, across from the brook, they're taking a pounding over here by the by the um, towns, but with the 5th Brigade advancing, that's going to really cause the French some 
some serious trouble in the turns to come. So that'll wrap it up for this chit pole. All we'll have left are the um, action chits now. Once the player turns over, we'll just draw our chits, finish off with the action chits. Clear out the old chits. Here we got artillery. I know I have no ammunition for my howitzer and I have no grand batteries. So we'll just keep going. Finally some reinforcements. The reinforcements we have both arrive at uh, Quatre Bras. The, the French 3rd Reserve Cavalry, the leading elements, and then the Hanoverian Brigade for the 3rd uh, Division for the British. Reinforcements arrive simultaneously, so we'll just start with the French here. In road column. They will get themselves up to there. And you can't see that. There they are. Just north of the little uh, farm there. We'll put these leaders, one with each of the regiments. And over here, far to the west, we will have the San Alvarian Brigade arrive. They don't have a lot of room to deploy here. We're going to shove them straight forward. Two Jaeger companies. I can't remember if they're allowed to stack. I don't think they are for free. I'm going to move them off to the side. Got three more battalions I need to place. There's actually some artillery, but I don't think I have enough. I don't have enough space to get them on there. So they will arrive. Next turn. Only two action ships remaining. Of course we'll pull every other ship first. So I'll have leader movement. Not sure what I'm going to do with the leaders. I'm going to take a look at this for a minute. Here at Quattro Bra, we mainly moved the leaders to try to rally any forces that were in poor condition here. Um, mainly the allies. I see something I forgot to move. I want to move Gordon back to reju rejoin Wellington so he can fly to someone next turn for command purposes. And we had Picton take over the guns there at the crossroads. But otherwise, not a lot of leader movement. Very similar for the Prussians as well. Larger, they're just leaders chasing down any of these plus crown disorder units to give them a better chance to rally. No real movement here in the lines. And mostly, most of the leaders had already moved. For the French, very similar. Pulled back a leader to try to rally some forces. Napoleon shifted further east, keeping 3rd Corps in command span, but just moving a little closer to the 4th Corps so they can get across that stream and remain activated. Otherwise, we're basically looking at slight repositioning of leaders to shore up any disordered or plus con disordered units. Oh, and forgot one important one. The colonel who had been stacked with Napoleon is now on the move towards the Quatre Bras field. He's carrying order number one, meaning 
recall the first core to Lenny. So he will move there to try to intercept the first core. I think by 5 o'clock, so that's two more turns, he will easily make it off the, he has to make it off the map right there. And of course that'll leave us with our last action chip and regroup. So we'll just go ahead and regroup the few out of command units we have on both fields and take a look at where they end up. Here at Quattro we see the remnants of the second Dutch Belgian kind of coalescing right in this area here. We also have an interesting position where these two out of command units are just blocked from rejoining their lines. They're too close to the edge of the maps. So they have nowhere else to maneuver to get there. And that is a uh, ammunition wagon and a regiment of cavalry. So they're just sort of stuck in limbo until something opens up on that side of the field. Here at Lenny, we see that little clutch of 2nd Brigade Infantry right in the center there. Has regrouped and moved closer to their 2nd Brigade leader. One of the challenges is I don't have enough out of command markers. So when units are back in the rear areas, I can easily lose them. And uh, it takes a little while to sort of scan and figure out who's in command and who is actually out of command. Otherwise, not a lot of regrouping for the French or anywhere else for the, for the Prussians. With the draw cup empty, that'll, that'll finish out the turn for us. Um, there's no morale level adjustments to be made, so we can just sort of recap what happened. The big doing here at Quatrebra is really the bottling up of the 3rd Division here. The French got some skirmishers in front of that entry area, poured some very heavy fire, caused a lot of casualties, maybe five or six, plus the division leader. That's always a bad thing to lose leaders. But effectively they've sealed off that area. Now I don't think the French can hold it for very long, especially with the Brunswick in position to really come at them, but it might be long enough because the French obviously want to get that crossroads, which they are massing the 9th Division and the 5th Division right there. And the 3rd Reserve Cavalry could very well get into play here because they have this wide open flank that they can sweep around. It's going to take a lot of command so it may end up being that we'll favor the eastern side here and leave the 6th Division for the French kind of to their own devices for a little while, just because we don't have the command points to keep everybody moving. Here at Ligny, it's probably the advance of the 5th Brigade here is now going to be a very potent thorn in the side, literally the side of the French army. But also, the way the 2nd Brigade was able to have some fairly effective counterattacks and push back the French along this little, the heights here. There aren't any artillery units left, really. But they did a good job of um, inflicting some damage on the French and pushing them back. On the downside, see on the, um, this flank here, basically the entirety of the 4th Brigade fell away and all they have left is that, that artillery unit. So the French may have an opportunity to, to uh, turn the flank on those heights there. The problem with that is that the 4th Corps is getting chewed up. The 13th and 14th Divisions are taking some casualties. Their cavalry is blown due to that foolish cavalry charge. So it may be up to the Reserve 12th Division there to finally punch a hole and make some real good progress. I don't expect that to happen in the next hour, but that'll be the plan. The last real outcome was the dispatching of the colonel to go and recall the first corps from his march to Quatrebra. If he can get there, of course he will, and we have plenty of time. That will bring 
first core in just about right here, and then I'll give them a straight shot towards that Prussian flank. So that's what the French are hoping for, while the meat grinder continues here around the, the towns with the third core in the fast fast diminishing 7th Division over here. So we'll play a couple more turns and check in at the, I guess it'll be the 1700 turn.